All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Agri-Food Conversations, brought to you by Ice Life Fund, the Van Trump Report, the Yield Lab Institute, and Family Farms Group. My name is David Yoakum. I'm an associate on the Ice Life Fund Ventures team, and I'm excited to welcome you all to our discussion today. Agri-Food Conversations is all about driving innovation in agriculture. Each month, we highlight a specific theme, and this month's theme is water management. On today's call, we're joined by Chris Terrell, Terrell CEO of Wexus Technologies. Wexus remotely connects with the farmer's utility data to track irrigation pumps, buildings, processing equipment, solar arrays, and more, and more via IoT cloud technology. The company's platform empowers indoor and outdoor growers, food processors, and irrigation districts to become more competitive, profitable, and valuable by integrating their existing systems. Now, each of you knows that companies are more likely to succeed with the right network of customers, talent, investors, and advisors. We have invited you to this call because you're some of the smartest, most talented people in Wex's market. You are potential customers and services for Wex's products and services. You have built a company similar to Wex's, or you have unique expertise uh, and understand the challenges and opportunities that Wex's may face. Before we get started, we have a quick poll question to get a better idea of who we have on the call today. Please take a few seconds to answer. Uh, and a few process comments while the poll is running. We are not soliciting investment. This presentation is to provide information that can help Wexus Technologies find customers that can help them grow their business. You can use the Q&A box to ask a question at any time, and we will answer as many questions as time allows at the end of the presentation. This webinar is being recorded and will be available for replay. And so without further delay, I'm pleased to introduce Chris Terrell, CEO of Wexus Technologies. Chris, please feel free to take it away. All right, thanks, David, appreciate it. So I'm Chris Terrell, CEO, co-founder of Wexus Technologies. We are solving the water energy nexus in uh, food and ag and uh, empowering our customers to drive efficiency, save costs, save time, uh, save energy and water, as well as adapting to climate change, which is accelerating, particularly in light of the uh, mega drought across from the Western United States. So I'll go into you know, how IOT, Internet of Things, generally fits in agriculture and then what we're specifically doing uh, with our IOT and technology as it relates to uh, resources, particularly energy and, and water. That's about 30% of global energy consumption goes to the, the farming and shipping food. So basically growing it and getting it uh, to your plate. And then tie that in with, you know, 80% of global water supplies are going to farming. And now we're experiencing you know, severe water stress globally and, and particularly in the United States. Here's a quick look at, you know, the Western U.S. is locked in a, a mega drought. You know, over the last 20 years, we've seen, you know, some wet years, but more dry years than usual. And uh, some of the data is indicating that this could be the worst drought in uh, 1,200 years. So, you know, water is becoming more and more scarce. It takes a lot of energy to move water, particularly for uh, irrigation. And uh, we're, we're just going to have to get smarter with what we have and just use our resources uh, more efficiently. So again, the problems that we're solving, I, I described, we're at the intersection of energy, water, and food and ag. We're, we're helping transform these markets through our technology. Uh, so quick quick shot of, you know, what the water energy nexus looks like. I love this image and how it relates particularly to IOT. So, you know, in the Western U S particularly in California where we're based, the ag industry is really tied into the power grid. And when there are problems with the power grid from uh, fires to you know, what we saw in Texas with you know, extreme cold temperatures, it can cause problems all the way down the chain, down to the crop level because the irrigation systems are usually grid tied. By far the vast majority of them are. You have diesel pumps and things out there too, but most of it's electric. And you also have on-site generation through solar. We have a lot of growers uh, in the Western US that have installed large scale solar arrays on site to produce power. In a lot of cases, uh, a megawatt or more. And usually it's about a couple acres uh, that you need to set aside for, you know, per megawatt. And, and these are large systems that are investing in. It's particularly per megawatts, about $2 million. Sometimes they'll finance those or they'll sign up for a power purchase agreement and basically lease the power back. But if, if there are issues and problems on the grid, 
that solar can actually go down. It's kind of a dirty secret of the industry, but it, it, you, it's a fail safe mechanism and it's usually one way feeding energy back into the grid uh, and you can off take some of it. But if the grid goes down, you can send your solar array down as well and you're stuck. On top of that, you've got you know, pretty complex irrigation systems through a system of pumps from groundwater and surface water and boosters. And each one of those is typically tied into an electric meter and also can have additional devices, IoT devices to monitor things like, you know, water flow rates, pressure, vibration, you know, all, all those different metrics, as well as weather and evapotranspiration ET. But again, with IoT, you know, we're, we're measuring everything at the grid level down to the pump level. And if those things have problems and issues from power outages to unreliable power service, all the way down to problems with the pumps themselves with you know, low efficiency wells that are in need of repair or you know, equipment that's just aging and motors that might be, need to be replaced, they can send, send down your water delivery and then that directly affects the potential yield of the crops and, and the quality of the crop. So who, who are we? This is my co-founder and I. We have a lot of experience in energy and agriculture. I founded Wexus about seven years ago after working at a global IoT company um, focused in energy and clean tech uh, called Enernoc, and they were acquired by really the Europe's largest utility uh, called NL. So I, right around the when we were, we were working together uh, at Enernoc, my co-founder and I, you know, kept hearing the same issues in agriculture around energy management, water management. There's really nothing tailored to ag, so we decided to start Wexus really to solve the problem. Uh, so a quick look at our history. You know, we have a lot of experience from demand response programs, energy programs, working with really large utilities across the Western U.S. And we built our platform from scratch based on grower feedback, a lot of user experience research development in the field to really solve, you know, drought related issues. And since then we've added solar tracking because it's the solar industry is growing just exponentially. It's creating new, new needs as well as expanding with partners and, and customers. So the market size, the addressable market, food, energy, everything from the whole food chain from growing it to getting to your plate use about 50% of total U S energy consumption. So it's pretty massive. And then when you just look at the farm level, it's about $21 billion, 2% of total U S energy consumption. And then potential share of the market, you know, 20,000 farms, about $100 million. So it's a really large, you know, multi-billion dollar market. We, we talk about energy. And what's driving that? I talked a little bit about electrification, but, you know, shifting from fossil fuel sources to electrified sources. We're seeing that on farms with going, you know, solar on site. Now you've got you know, EVs, like the Ford F-150 is going electric. We're seeing e-tractors. Pumps have been electrified for quite a while. And these costs keep escalating. Energy costs in particular, almost exponentially. It's just massive increase in costs and less reliable power. The other big driver is, you know, water scarcity, declining yields. Groundwater is being depleted really fast. And in drought years, growers have to make up the difference. If they can't get surface water, they have to pump it out of the ground. In California, during the last drought, one of the metrics I saw from UC Davis is that about $300 million in increased cost in the ag industry just to, to pump more water out of the ground, all tied to the, the energy prices. So it gets really expensive really fast. We've got longer droughts, it's hurting yields I'm seeing particularly this year, uh, harvest moving up sooner because of a, a lack of water. And, you know, growers are, are even, I think what I was just hearing uh, first week of August starting harvest, usually don't start until 
late September and October. And we've got delayed investments in our infrastructure, particularly with growers that, that we work with. They're having to finance their own equipment, their own pumps. Um, and we found additional mechanisms and financing from energy dollars to help pay for those kind of things. But usually the costs are pushed on to growers themselves and it just gets deferred and delayed until your infrastructure and your equipment just starts breaking down. And the last big driver, consumer demand, we hear this all the time. You know, people want to know where their food's grown and they want to know it's sustainable. What are we doing to manage our, our resources? And then you know, we've also got new regulations to, to manage water consumption and, and groundwater in particular in California with the Sigma, the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act. So those are the three big drivers. Ag's underserved, like I talked about, you know, residential, commercial, industrial space, you got all kinds of, you know, energy management systems. Ag, not so much. And our value prop, um, you know, re reducing waste, generating ROI, generating cash, particularly from energy savings, automating, detecting problems, and uh, controlling your data, using your data to, for reporting and just automating all those processes. So our traction, you know, we're, we consider ourselves crop agnostic. We work from, you know, outdoor, indoor, food processing, water utilities like irrigation districts. We work with wineries, vineyards, nut crops, uh, row crops, you name it. Uh, so this is a look at some of our customers and uh, some pretty large names as well on the industry. And we have good traction, you know, repeat business because we're, driving a lot of value for our customers. Uh, some impact, quite, quite a lot on cost savings, but the average, averaging about 20% annual cost savings for our customers. A lot of energy savings and demand and power demand. Labor, you know, number one issue in agriculture is finding enough labor and then automating a lot of these repetitive tasks and then water as well. Uh, some quick case studies, um, you know, Hancock Farmland Services, Hancock AIG, as one of our customers in the Central Valley of California. Uh, they're one of the largest you know, farm, farmland managers in the world. I'm sure many of you folks know who they are. And we're in particularly tracking over 300 irrigation pumps, as well as multiple solar arrays for them. And they're, they're using it for you know, the cost savings, but also to, to balance their groundwater needs because we're able to track the energy cons consumption, water consumption, and they're now limited to, in some areas, how much water they can draft out of the ground, usually an acre foot to two acre feet maximum. So they're using all our system as a kind of a portfolio approach to manage all that. Uh, Jackson Family Wines, another customer of ours, um, you know, really needed uh, insight for their sustainability reporting their usage on the vineyards and we were able to help them track, track that in real time at uh, some of their pumps in the Salinas Valley. And then Cork and Irrigation District, you know, really large 49,000 acre territory, a lot of wells, pump stations, delivering water to growers, spending a lot, particularly during dry years on power bills. So we've installed our system tracking all their meters and installing additional devices uh, with them to basically put in a widespread SCADA system that pulls in your costs and then they can remotely manage everything from the office. And a couple of quick case studies, you know, before I get into how all this stuff actually works, I'm sure everyone's wondering that, but what you can do with this information, this is what a pump failure looks like on the top here. We're tracking energy, energy consumption down to every 15 minutes and orange and then water consumption as well. And when you see those drop really fast, it's usually an equipment problem. In this case, the, the well, um, the well blew out. Sorry, let me go back. Water drained out and uh, the, the motor was drawing air at the pump. So Things like that can surge your, your pump motor, and that's usually you know thirty to fifty thousand dollar cost replacement right there. 
So our system detects these fast dropping changes in efficiency and then alerts the customer in real time via text message uh, before it becomes a catastrophic failure. And that, that was happening over a couple of days. And then over here, when you start running out of water, particularly out of groundwater, this is your energy consumption at the top. Water consumption starts to go down, and this is over several months. And we alerted this customer that, hey, you're probably going to run out of water here. And they were able to actually to stop pumping here, reallocate some surface water, balance out a bit more of their groundwater pumping because of that. So in the past, you just never had the ability to do these things because of a lack of technology. And now we have technology to do it to really drive a predictive value. So how does it work? So Wexus is a software platform. It's tying into utility data from billing information to smart meters that utilities have already installed, as well as all these different utility rates. Nothing has to get installed up front. So we're just tapping into all the existing infrastructure from the energy industry. And then we can also tap into existing devices on site, things like digital flow meters, pressure sensors. I'll show you in a minute what that looks like at, let's say, an irrigation pump. And then just leveraging that, that data to look for inefficiencies and cost savings, alerting, reporting, labor, labor savings, automation as much as we can. So just quick look at some of the features, report, reports, alerts, controlling your data, accessing it in real time, digitizing all that farm information that is typically done manually um, and on paper. And then tracking the savings, and this is really big for our customers where we can grab all their consumption down to 15 minutes or several years and then optimize the best utility plans to be on to really lower your costs. So that's, that's a huge value add. As well as solar, you know, we, we can track how much energy be, is being used, how much is being produced, and then the actual savings and the ROI of the system. So we, we've seen crazy things, especially in the last year with the, the wildfires in the Western US. The ash from a lot of the wildfire smoke is, is covering panels out in the field, and we saw 20% decreases in power output off these solar arrays. So we were alerting our customers, and sometimes I have O&M companies go do this too, to just wash panels, and you see the power starts to tick back up. And if with solar, if it's not producing energy, it's, it's not producing dollars. It's a direct one-on-one -one correlation. So if you start getting behind, it's hard to break even off that system life of usually 20 to 30 years. So you got to make sure it's, it's maintained. And that's a large part of uh, what we're doing. Uh, and then tracking equipment and resources in real time is a quick look at uh, it's a farm in uh, King City. It's a particular pump that we're tracking. And we can see the status, whether it's on or off and following the irrigation schedule, how much it's costing you per acre foot. It's a lot more expensive, you know, 370 bucks an acre foot to operate during these peak hours that utilities charge, particularly in California. So now, you know, our, our customers can make water cost driven decisions, which, which wells are maybe more expensive to run than others and also track their efficiency in, in real time. And then here's a quick look at uh, a solar array. This is a ground mounted one megawatt array. At a, and it's tied into a, a processing plant. But we saw, you know, generation trending down year over year. A lot of, in a, as the industry kind of solar industry took off, we saw kind of a, uh, you know, go at all costs mentality from a lot of companies and some of them just didn't install the equipment correctly and that's where we see the generation dropping you know year over year and month to month so this particular customer was able to file with their insurance company 
and get a lot of this covered under their policy as well as under warranty from the solar manufacturers. So they ended up, you know, they were losing about $40,000 a year without this system performing as promised. And now that it's getting, it's all gotten replaced. A lot of the inverters were fixed. The panels have been fixed uh, or cleaned. And they're looking at adding an energy storage system, like some, some batteries at the hauler facility on site. Basically get back up on track. But we've seen, you know, environmental factors like ash and then wind storms knocking over panels, particularly the older style rack systems. So again, with this data, you can track these issues before they become catastrophic. You know, a lot of times people don't even know there's a problem until months go by. Right? And then every day it's down, you're losing money. Here's a look at like an IoT installation at a, at a pump system out at a vineyard is in the Salinas Valley. For this one, we, we wrapped it all into utility financing to pay for fixing the motor. And the customer wanted to install additional sensors. So that was all included with the financing. So we have, you know, digital flow meter, a pressure sensor, a well depth sensor, and it all feeds back into a data logger with a cell connection to get real time data, you know, off the site. So they're getting energy, uh, water, uh, as well as some additional metrics uh, to track this. It's really critical, you know, piece of inf infrastructure. As another look at uh, a different style of uh, IoT installation, this is with uh, microsatellites, which is a very new way to uh, grab data from really anywhere. We're seeing, you know, SpaceX is doing this uh, with developing the internet a global internet. There are companies uh, like Swarms based in the Bay Area and there are some others that are doing this um, for IoT specific data applications and they can grab data from a microsatellite that's orbiting the earth in any, really any location. So it's great, great for ag because, you know, we, we see cell, cell dead zones and, and pockets of bad connectivity with this, you can get data from anywhere and tie it into your pumps. Here's a data logger. It's self-powered with a little solar panel, and then it's easy to mount and it ties into the, the panel to get energy out of it. And you, that's where you can do the, the things like real-time tracking and efficiency tracking and all these other things. But this is you know kind of where the industry is going. It's really easy to install. Like these, these you can install like 15, 15, 20 minutes and then go on to the next pump and just move on down the road. How, you know, our business model is designed to be flexible software as a service. Uh, so we have several different plans based on how much data you need monthly, daily, or real time and what type of alerting you need. So that's really important, you know, in the food and ag industry to be flexible, to help drive, you know, higher margin, by driving more efficiency and automation. So we, we try to make this really flexible. You don't have to go in on a single plan. It's all based on each piece of equipment, you know, the utility data it's tied to and what the return on investment is gonna be for each one of those. So our, our customers mix and match based on their needs. I'm talk about the financing, you know, this is really important. We're seeing a lot of this in the energy industry and it's going out into <clears throat> other verticals like uh, the industrial sector, commercial buildings, but basically using financing mechanisms and utility dollars to pay for equipment upgrades. So some of that stuff I was showing on the you know, previous images, but like on bill financing, energy savings basically pays for the equipment upgrades and, and the additional technology to monitor it with no interest, no money down, you know, Stuff's, uh, you know, really, really cost-effective programs. And then you've got your traditional rebates, incentives. Uh, we're seeing an uptick in demand response programs. Uh, it's basically where utilities will pay you to curtail energy and then using the additional layer of the technology to manage that. Particularly in 
California right now because the grid, the power grid is so stressed with these really high temperatures in this drought. The hydropower production is, is way down from you know, previous decades, right? And we've avoided several blackouts over the last couple months because of programs like this. And ag is, is you know, one part of that. So our strategy and expansion, you know, we're based in California. It's our, our back uh, backyard. In the last year, we've actually expanded it into Arizona, Colorado, and also Mexico. There's surprisingly uh, really high costs in Mexico for power and also some pretty unreliable power with almost weekly blackouts in some areas. So, but big areas, you know, expansion areas for us are Texas, Nebraska, when you look at, you know, irrigation spend and, and costs, you know, PAC Northwest, as well as Southeastern Florida, and then other international expansion, potentially Canada and Australia. And then future growth, you know, basically IOT in general is really just exploding across all these markets from energy with renewables and battery storage and, and monitoring those systems to water and water markets. There's now a water futures market in California, which launched last year, as well as the need for regulation reporting, you know, monitoring groundwater consumption. And then agriculture, we're seeing it all over the place, you know, particularly for precision agriculture. So that's everything I wanted to cover. Um, try to make it a quick blast. That's basically what we do, you know, how we're doing this in food and ag and, and IoT in general. So if I'm happy to answer any questions. Fantastic. Well, Chris, we really appreciate your time and the story and the really important and timely work that you guys are doing over at Wexis. Now that we're completed with the presentation portion of the discussion today, if there are questions from the audience, please feel free to type your questions into the Q&A box and I will answer them in the order that they are received. The, again, the Q&A box is better than the chat window so we can just all manage it in one place. But while we're waiting for some questions to sort of roll in, Chris, one, one thing I'm curious about is just as you have worked across the landscape of the, I think primarily the West Coast and a lot in California, just that there have been certain types of crops, growers, or operation sizes that have been drawn towards Wexus as sort of an early adopter base. And whether it's, you know, basically, is it just the most water stressed crops that are the ones that are in the most eager to adopt something like this, or is there more nuance to it than that? Yeah, really good question. I've generally seen a lot of interest from certain sectors that are usually a higher margin crop and also have a sustainability and marketing needs around that, like, you know, CSR um, reporting. So like the wine industry, um, definitely early adopters for newer technologies, always looking for a competitive edge, always looking to, you know, increase their margins and you know, almond industry, almonds, pistachios, walnuts, you know, very, very similar, right? Because there, there's a need to obviously, you know, show uh, less water consumption and showing you're being very efficient with your resources. But at the same time, you know, everybody's competing too and looking for, for better yields, better margins. And they typically have, you know, the resources to, to pay for the new technologies. And that ultimately helps you know, other sectors uh, of ag as you get more widespread adoption, you know, from ag tech players. So like row crops and leafy greens, you know, we work with berry growers and kind of all the way down the chain, but it seems like, you know, essentially like fixed crops have been the biggest early adopters. Got it. One question we have from the audience is, does utility implementation of time of day pricing on electricity open new opportunities or is that already common in your trade area? Yeah, it's, it's opening new opportunities in other ways because like precision ag, a lot of companies are focused on 
you know, improving yield and tracking, you know, irrigation water, making sure you're very pinpointed. But when you overlay that with, okay, this time of use and how much it's actually costing me and looking for additional cost savings, it's a huge impact, right? I got as an example, I showed that cost per acre foot, but there's some of these you know, new rates have rolled out in California. And when you pump between five and 8 PM, it can be almost 10 times more expensive. So if you're not able to manage that, we have, you know, growers that are just getting hit with these huge bills 30 days later. And they're like, How, what did, where did this come from? You know, in the midst of a drought and you know, fires and unreliable power, it's just, it's crazy. So it, you know, opens up new opportunities. Um, and you also have to be really mindful of it at the same time, you know, it's making it more expensive to do business. And I think it could be driving agriculture out of California and other States, you know, that essentially uh, cheaper power. Yeah. One, you know, as, as there's more investment in the ag tech sector, let's say into some of the smarter IOT devices that may incorporate water management in, in, in inclusion of other factors that might be collecting microclimate data at the farm level, something like maybe a crop X or an arable, other solutions like that that are also working in the precision irrigation space. Is that something that ends up working with Wexus because you guys are already built in sort of the existing infrastructure of the farm? So have you had any instances where you've had where you've had a farmer adopt a new technology like that, and there's a way for you to intelligently connect the data streams from those two those two devices? Yeah, yeah. There's we we've definitely seen a lot of that in terms of you know establishing partnerships and sharing data. There's there's I think it's more driven by the customers to be honest, you know, by growers. Is I've seen less integration between ag tech companies and sharing sharing data uh, and building out the you know the API infrastructure and just making it easy. I th I think it's it's getting better, um, but it it just makes it a lot easier for the customer when they don't have to go to several different places to get information. You know, just feed it in maybe to a central piece of software that they need. So I, I think it's an opportunity in the market where it's starting, but there's still a ways to go. Yeah. And I guess, you know, maybe this, is, this isn't necessarily relevant to the business now, but, you know, we, you know, when we think about some of the shifting tides around the water crisis in California, I think for anybody who's lived in California falls, especially crop industry has read a lot of news about, existential drought in California for a long time, yet the industry has persisted, yet every year it seems to get worse. And this year seems like almost a very special case compared to, I um, mean, there's just so many record-breaking um, numbers happening this year. If production does start to shift elsewhere, what does that mean for a company like Wexus? Are you guys in a position where you would be able to service in other, in other countries or in other states where it's expected that production might shift to? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for us, it's, it's really important to watch the market and where things are going. So the good thing for us is that utility data follows a standard structure almost globally. You know, you have the same types of bills and accounts and meters. So we, you know, we, we follow the market and where the needs are. And then what I do like about um, the satellite connectivity for IOT and devices, which has really started to, ramp up in the last year is you can deploy it anywhere right so you're not you're not locked into certain you know data bottlenecks so yeah it's a very good question got it well chris um seeing that we don't have any further questions from the audience and we always like to ask anybody presenting on agri-food what can the audience do to help you out here and how can they find you sure yeah yeah then definitely check out our website, wexisapp.com. It's uh, tail end of my email address here. We got some really good content on our blog. There's a link directly to our blog. Really good case studies. And if you you know know anyone that's interested or you're interested yourself, feel free to hit the sign up button. We can take a look at your data. See if we can drive some some value. But that's basically you know 
we're just we're just looking to grow. Excellent. Well, again, Chris, thank you so much for joining us today, um, and congratulations on all the progress to date. Um, I'd also like to thank the audience for your active participation and for for joining us in the webinar this afternoon. We host these agri-food conversations every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central Time. And if you'd like to share this with a friend, we welcome you to do so. A replay of this webinar will be emailed to you in the next 24 hours, and new viewers can register for agri-food conversations by going to agrifoodconversations.com. Uh, if you're interested, join us next week. We host Flora Pulse, an exciting company using remote sensors to directly, continuously, and easily monitor water stress in plants. Again, Chris, thank you so much for your time today, and we we'll look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.